Hey folks, I want to take a few minutes to demonstrate the features of this SLJ3, which is a fully automatic, direct drive, uh, quartz lock, programmable turntable. Uh, emphasis on programmable, we'll get uh, a little bit more into those features when we uh, get into the demo. So this is an early 80s uh, turntable. It's an evolution of the SL15. The SL15 was the programmable version of the SL10. Uh, SL10 has become uh, very popular in recent years. It's the first generation of this type of unit. And the SL15 was a programmable version of that. So this one um, has those features. Uh, it's One thing to note is that while it is, it is a small and quite cute, um, it, is, it is not a toy. It, uh, it's a sophisticated turntable. It sounds excellent and has great specs. So really, uh, these turntables uh, surprise people with their performance, which is uh, quite good. It's also going to be uh, very gentle on your records. Uh, you only have to touch the record to put it on or take it off. And it has the P-mount tone arm, uh, which has a nominal tracking force of one uh, and a quarter and uh, a range of one to 1.5. And uh, that's been set as uh, uh, and calibrated as part of uh, my restoration. So this one is in excellent condition. Um, just a, a, there's a little bit of a scratch here, a couple other very minor issues, but overall very good. Uh, the uh, dust cover has been uh, uh, polished, uh, something that's rarely done because it, it's quite a bit of work. You need to mask off all the paint as well as the printed portions, um, but it can be done. Um, kind of the weak point of these turntables is that the cover is, this clear cover is very prone to scratches. So. Uh, most of them are, are, are quite, you know, mediocre to poor. Um, so this, I'd say, is better than, say, 95% of the units you're likely to find. Uh, so it's in really nice. Uh, it's certainly not perfect, but uh, very good, catches the light very well, very, very presentable. Now, also as part of my restoration, uh, the drive mechanism for the uh, tone arm carriage, I disassemble that, I fully clean it, clean out all the old lubricants, um, reassemble it, and re-lubricate it with modern lubricants. Uh, the drive uh, motor and gear, that's also cleaned and then lubricated. New belt as well is fitted at that time. Uh, one thing that's it really nobody, nobody else does is to uh, uh, remove, clean, and lubricate the spindle, not just, uh, you know, add a couple of drops of oil, but to remove that, clean it with... Um, alcohol and then uh, uh, you know synthetic lubricants and then and then reassemble it uh, as well as then an overall detailing and the polishing of the cover that I, uh, I mentioned so one one thing if you've seen any videos or, or know this turntable um, the overall dimensions are the size of a record jacket which is really quite amazing um, and we'll, with that let's go ahead and put on a record and demonstrate the features of the turntable. So here I'll note that I did fit it with a new uh, AT85EP P-mount stylus. That's an elliptical stylus and a new cartridge. And uh, that's made by Audio-Technica. So very nice cartridge. So you're really going to get uh, uh, really the great performance out of this table. So let's turn it on, close it up. All the operations are, you know, occur with the cover down since the tone arm is mounted in the lid. So really three ways to operate this turntable. Simplest way is just to press start. And it will move over and begin playing. So let's stop that and get into the second way. The second way is kind of more uh, what you'd call skip search, similar to what you see with the SLJ2. So let's say we want to go to track, uh, let's go to track four and press start. So we press skip uh, the four button and then start. In this case, now it'll go directly to track four and drop the tone arm and then begin playing. So one thing to note is that the J3 has a little bit more sophistication built into it uh, than the other models. It uh, drops a little bit early then waits for just, just before the song is about to start to unmute. 
which is uh, which is really nice, and it uh, it gets that it catches the beginning of the song. Let me uncue there. Catches the beginning of the song uh, much more often than it misses it. Sometimes you'll hear a little bit of the of the previous song if they're very very close or if there's no gap. Um, but it's really really quite amazing how how well that works. So that's the skip search. Now once you're there, you could say let's say I want to skip uh, back. Uh, two. Let's skip back to. Uh, let's cue down, and then skip back to. So this will take to the beginning of the song and then the previous song. And again, it's going to wait for the beginning, just just before the song starts. So that's a skip search function. Just just a note, the um, the ability for it to find the gaps between the tracks and its position. There's a couple adjustments, um, like say if you fit a new cartridge and that's not, not hitting quite uh, precisely. Uh, there's a sensitivity adjustment uh, switch on the front here and under this plastic um, rubber cover rather, there's a, a little thumb wheel for adjusting it positionally. Uh, very easy to do if you if you find it's not not hitting it um, quite right. Uh, let, let's let's uh, demonstrate the kind of the most sophisticated way of using the turntable, which is programmable mode. Um, so in this case, let's hit uh, let's do um, well, let's do this. Let's do four five three, and then press start. So we're not going to listen to all these songs, but um, we'll kind of just watch it do its thing. First thing it does is it scans the full record, counts the tracks, and uh, for instance, if I press six and there's no six track on this side, it would uh, then delete that from from my selection. But we press four first, and uh, there's five tracks, so it's going to start on four. Now, once you're So once you're within a track, you could uh, queue up and um, you notice know, so I just it would go either, I can use the queue to either go to the very beginning or very end of that track or any, any point in between, which is kind of kind of a neat feature. It, it limits the queue to that, that those boundaries. Um, let's go back down. Now if you want to move forward. Um, now, one thing, you can't select other tracks that you didn't originally select. So if I'm trying to press one or two, I can't do that. Um, but I started with four, and then we went to five. So if I press four again, it goes back to the beginning of four. But I press five, so it's going to go to the next track, five. So sorry for that little delay there, but here we go. The most famous song on this record. So it is kind of neat. You can program. You can program tracks. Um, you know, really in any order, which is kind of neat. Let's go to the end of that track, uh, just before the end. Uh, go back down, and now you'll see it go from five, the end of this track five, back to three. So we were at the end of the track, it picked back up. Now it's going back to track three. So scanning backwards. It always goes back a little bit further and then and then uh, comes forward to the beginning of the track. Again, waits for the beginning of the song to play. So let's, uh, those are the functions of the table, really from the standpoint of its really simplest mode to its most sophisticated mode. Uh, so it's a really fun turntable. Uh, um, it, it, it's really uh, remarkably uh, sophisticated in, in how well it, it grabs the beginning of those songs um, almost every time. Uh, it's really quite nice if you were to, you know, obviously you could make a mixtape or anything like that, um, which is less important uh, 
these days. But anyway, um, it is a fun turntable. It's a really uh, early 80s classic. And thanks for, thanks for watching.